something's very out of whack here. We've just gone through the most difficult, strenuous rate cycle in the history of the Federal Reserve. And what do we have? How about incredibly low unemployment? How about bank after bank today noting that credit defaults are either low or totally under control? How about commercial real estate actually being attractive as investment in some cities? How about the stock market hitting record high after record high after record high? So then, what's with the incredible sense of gloom that seems to surround everyone I meet? How can the negativity, the pessimism, be so thick that you can cut it with a knife? What explains this extraordinary disparity, the collision of two worlds, one lacking hope and the other so hopeful that it truly feels like we're in the good old days? When I survey this situation, I come back with two very different theories. The first is that inflation, very specifically the supermarket inflation, has really put people in a very bad way. Wages may be solid and jobs may be plentiful, but when you go grocery shopping, you're stunned by the prices. You simply can't believe that they haven't come back down one bit since COVID. Grocery prices are the reality of the moment, not the default rates of the problems of commercial real estate or the stock market hitting new highs, which feel totally divorced from the day-to-day lives of Americans. It's true. The grocery store aisles are so out of whack that you have to ask yourself, is there a law which says that packaged goods companies aren't allowed to cut prices? It sure feels that way. If it weren't for Costco, Kirkland's signature brand premium private label or, or Walmart's great value brand and this new better goods brand, which I really like. You think that we're still in the midst of the pandemic where raw costs soared and supply chains were completely crushed. We're beginning to see some revolt by the consumer, but nothing like what you'd expect. Instead, people just seem to be resigned to price gouging. We feel like we're back at that Jimmy Carter era where the president influencingly talked about how the country was filled with discouraged people, in part because of the inflation at that point at the gas pump. That talk, the dubbed the Moylez speech, even though he never used that term, resonates more now than it did back when Carter spoke about it in July of 79. Never mind that inflation's cooled down to the point where the Fed can probably start cutting rates in September. We're in much better shape than back then, but it somehow feels worse. The second theory, how about politics? Soon after Carter gave that speech, his Republican opponent offered a different message, one of hope and unity. Reagan beat the incumbent president in a landslide. After an initially very rocky period as the Fed ruthlessly raised rates to beat inflation, we had a sustained advance in hiring and the start of the greatest bull market in history. Now, we have an election filled with hatred and rancor, devoid of the genial positives that made Reagan so popular. When you have this kind of anger and ugliness in Washington, it pervades every aspect of our lives. Everything positive seems like nothing more than an abstraction. I know that Trump said uh, he will allow Jerome Powell to serve out his term at the Fed, which runs through 2028, said that in an interview this evening. He's, con- he- he's considering J.P. Morgan's CEO, Jamie Dimon, as Treasury Secretary. Jamie's a centrist. Could matter. Could cool things. But the hatred, the fighting, the craziness, it sure has to die down or we will all be pessimists eventually. You know where there's sustained optimism, though? Right here in this room, Wall Street, where profits are leading to ever higher prices for so many stocks of which you can own. The market, which reflects the reality of the economy, is benefiting plenty of people, but not nearly enough to change the mood of the nation because they're not enough investors. Look, I'm not a political guy. But I can praise capitalism as an engine for wealth creation. As Brian Moynihan, the CEO of Bank of America, said this morning when I interviewed him, it's just a shame that so few people care and so few people are combating inflation by investing in American business, which knows nothing about a malaise and everything about opportunity for all, including those who think they can't afford it so they don't even bother to try. I like to say there's always a bull market somewhere. I promise try to find it just for you right here on Mid Money. I'm Jim Cramer. See you tomorrow. Last call starts now. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.